All right, guys. So our back end is is pretty much done. We can we can do CRUD functionality through our API. We can create, read, update, and delete items. Now I'm going to build a front end using HTML, JavaScript, and jQuery. All right, we're using jQuery to make AJAX requests to our API. So what I'm going to do is go to my htdocs folder, which is my the root of my web server, and I'm just going to create a folder here, and I'm going to call it Item Manager. All right, and then inside here, we're just going to create an index HTML file. All right, and this is this is the only file uh, that we're going to need. Actually, you know what? I don't think I have extensions enabled on this Windows machine. Uh, let's see. I need to go to uh, let's see where is it? Options, change folder, and search options. If you're using Windows, I would highly suggest that you do right here hide extension for known file types you want to uncheck that and then apply and you can see that it actually had a txt extension so we'll just get rid of that make sure it's an html file all right so i'm going to go ahead and just bring this into atom or go like that and let's see we're going to put some base html tags in here for the title i'll just say item manager and then as far as style, I'm going to use Bootstrap, but I'm going to use a customized version from Bootswatch. All right, if we go to bootswatch.com, uh, I'm going to grab the simplex design here and just click download. And I'm just going to grab the CSS link right here. All right, and then we'll just put that right in a link tag. So right here. All right, and then we'll have Bootstrap. So we're also going to need jQuery. So let's look up jQuery CDN. All right, and I'll just grab um, 1.x uncompressed. And we just want to grab this script tag right here, copy it, and put it right above the ending body tag. All right, and then we'll put our script tags right here. All right. So with jQuery, we have to first of all say document dot ready and then in here put a function so this is going to check to make sure the page is ready before it runs this function and then once it is ready we'll just let's do an alert one just to test okay so now if we go to uh, local host slash item manager oops, spelled that wrong still spelled that wrong <laughs> And there we go. It gives us an alert one. Good. So let's get rid of the alert. And then we'll start to build out our interface up here. So I'm going to use a nav bar just to kind of make it look good. So I'm going to go to get bootstrap. Dot com. And go to getting started and then examples. And then this starter template. I'm going to click on that and then do a control U to see the source code and we're going to grab this nav tag right here. All right, we'll put that right in here. And let's see, I'm going to get rid of the nav bar fix top class. And then I'm going to change the project name right here to item manager. And then as far as links, we're just going to have a home link. It's going to be a single page application. So we'll set that to just slash and then actually yeah, and then we'll just get rid of this active class. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, there's our nav bar. It looks different because we're using Bootswatch. We're not using the regular Bootstrap theme. Now we want to fetch data from our API. We want to grab the items and output them here. So in our HTML, uh, what I'm going to do is first of all put a div with the class. Uh, we're going to put the class of container. And then in here, I'm going to put a UL and I'm going to give this an ID of items. OK, this is where they're going to be put into dynamically. OK, we're not going to put anything in here in the HTML. And then I'm also going to give it a class, a bootstrap class of list group. All right. So we want to fetch the data from the serve from the uh, API and then 
use jQuery and JavaScript to insert them into here as list items. All right, so let's go down to our script. And we're going to create a function called get items. All right, and this is going to get items from API. All right, I'm going to make this a little bigger for you guys. All right, so we want to make uh, an Ajax request, and there's a few different ways to do it with jQuery. We're going to use the Ajax function. Okay, so we want to do dot uh, money sign dot Ajax, and then this is going to take in an object. So we want to put in some curly braces, and then you want to specify the URL that you want to make the request from, which in our case is going to be HTTP slash item API dot dev slash API slash items. Okay, that's where we set it to. All right, and then down here, this is actually asynchronous, so we need to add on to the end here dot done, and then once that is finished, it's going to call a function. All right, and that function is going to include our data, which I'm going to call items. Okay, so let's do console dot log. Oops. We'll say console dot log items. And let's open up the console here with F12. And I actually want that down the bottom. Uh, let's see. I haven't used it on the side forever. Where is it? Right here. Okay. So if we go to console and we reload, nothing's happening because we need to actually call this get items function. So let's go right here at the top and we'll say get items. All right, so if we reload, we're going to get this error that says no access control allow origin. Basically, what's happening is it's seeing that we're trying to make a request to a different domain than we're on. Um, so it's giving us this error. Now, there's a, there's a few ways to get around this. You, what we're going to do is we're going to enable something called cores on our server, and that's going to allow these requests to come in even if they're from a separate domain. So there's uh, a couple ways to enable cores in Laravel. I'm going to use a, a, a package. So let's see, we're going to say Laravel cores package. And it's this one right here. All right, this Barry VDH slash Laravel cores. All we have to do is install it with Composer, and then we're going to add this to the middleware. All right, and then we'll no longer get that error. So let's open up Commander or whatever you're using for your terminal. And let's see, we're going to just grab this right here. And we'll paste that in. Install that. And then we're going to copy this right here. Okay, so this is going to go into our config app PHP file on our Laravel website. All right, we'll just wait for that to finish. All right, that's all set. Now let's go to Laravel and we're going to go into provide um, no config app.php and we want to go down to the providers which starts here and we're going to put this right here. We'll paste that in. All right, so now let's go back to our front end and reload. Okay, that still didn't work. Um, why didn't that work? Let's go back to the documentation here. So we installed it. Oh, uh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Did I put the right thing in there? Let's go back down here. All right. So I put that. Okay. So the last thing we need to do here is, is, um, grab this and put it into our middleware. Okay, and this is going to be in app HTTP kernel dot PHP. So that's uh, where is it? HTTP kernel dot PHP. And we're going to stick that right in here. Is that correct? Service? Yeah, and then let's see. Did I do it right here? Service provider. All right, so let's save kernel. 
and then hopefully that works. Let's go back and reload. And now you can see it's actually fetching our objects from the back end. All right, cores enables us to do that, even though we're on a separate domain. All right, so obviously we want to do more than just console log the items. We want them to, to display over here. So let's get rid of this. And what I'm going to do is create a variable called output. I'm going to set it to nothing by default. And then we need to loop through the items because it's an array. And then we want to add each one. We want to append onto this variable. So to loop through, I'm going to use a jQuery each loop. All right, so we're going to say each pass in the items which are being passed back to us from our API. And then we're going to have a function. All right, and that's going to give us in two attributes. We have the key and then the value, which I'm just going to call item. Okay, so we'll have access to each item individually. So now we want to take that output variable and we want to append to it with plus equals. All right, and then we're going to use back ticks right here. And this allows us to basically put in HTML here and use multiple lines. We don't have to concatenate or anything like that. All right, just make sure you use the back ticks, not quotes. The back tick is to the left of the number one key. All right, and then in here, we're going to put an LI. It's bootstrap, so we're going to say class list group item. All right, and then let's see, we'll close that up. Oops. And then in here, let's put some strong tags. And we'll put the item text. Now, when you want to put in a variable in a template string, you can use the money sign and then curly braces. And then we should be able to get item, which is coming from here. And remember, it's an object. So we want the text part of it. All right. So we can say item dot text. And we'll put a colon here and a space. And then over here, we'll put in the body so we can say text dot body. All right. And then so far, we're just building this output variable. Now we want to output it. So remember, in the HTML, we put a UL. Where is it? UL with the ID of items. So we want to append on to that. So make sure you're outside of the each loop, which ends right here. And then we're going to use jQuery and we're going to grab the ID of items and then do dot append and then just put in our output variable. All right. And that should do it. Let's save. Go back and reload. Text is not defined. Why is text not defined? Each items function key item dot text wait a sec oh 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 this is item dot body there we go so now this is outputting whatever is in our database and our Laravel application okay we're, we're we're accessing it through the API that we built all right so this is kind of a big deal this is a this is a really good um, good project to know to know how to do these things because that's that's what's big right now is is restful APIs. All right. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can actually insert items through the front end through our back end API. All right. So I will see you in the next video.